I set out a goal, round trip to EU, while ferrying 20 Kerbals. And against all odds, I managed to pull it off with the largest space plane in KSP2. Now, to truly understand the challenge that laid ahead of us, we first need to look at our destination. Eve is a true giant of the Kerbal system. However, beyond his beauty hides a dark reality. Most Kerbals that enter Eve's atmosphere are never seen again. This comes down to several factors. Eve's surface gravity is nearly twice than that of Kerbin, and at sea level, its atmosphere is four times as dense. This means that not only are you losing tons of delta V to drag, but your engine efficiency and thrust also suffer greatly. In fact, at Eve's sea level, a chemical rocket engine is only operating at about half of its rated output and efficiency. That's why the typical Eve Ascent module looks something like this. A relatively small and efficient craft that can overcome both the weight, drag and engine efficiency problems. So, what if we scale the rocket up to carry more Kerbals? Okay. Well, jumping from a single-seater rocket to only 5 Kerbals increases our weight from around 50 tons to 360, and requires us to use 5 mammoth engines just to lift off the ground. And that's just the lander. Clearly, a rocket capable of carrying 20 Kerbals into orbit is not very feasible, at least in the current state of the game. The main problem that we're dealing with here is needing an obscene amount of engines to have a higher than 1.0 TVR to be able to take off. However, there is a way to get around it. Space planes. Even though this craft's TVR is only 0.7 on the surface, they can still take off and get to a relatively high altitude. That's down to the fact that, with the help of our wings, we can ascend in a shallower profile and bypass the need for a higher than 1.0 TVR. Since we need around 9000 meters a second of delta V to reach Eve's orbit, clearly the best option is to, as always, rely heavily on the swerve. But this does present a problem. Even though our TVR requirements are lessened by our wings, the swerve is extremely inefficient and weak on Eve's surface. In fact, the swerve is basically useless below 20 kilometers of altitude. This means that we will need to have additional chemical engines to lift our craft out of the soupy lower atmosphere before we can even think about igniting the swerve. Since Eve's lower atmosphere is incredibly dense, and even small wings will provide a lot of lift, we want to scale down our aerodynamic surfaces as much as possible to minimize drag and dead weight. However, we do want to keep our rudders fairly large, since we will be ascending at a relatively low speed at first, and we want to minimize our side slip as much as possible. In the interest of keeping our total weight down, we'll be putting all of our lower atmospheric chemical engines on decouplers and staging them as we ascend out of EU. The two best options are vectors and aerospikes due to their great atmospheric performance. The tricky part here is weight distribution. We want to make sure that the balance between our weight and center of lift remains roughly the same throughout our six EVE stages. The easiest way to do it is to place all of our stages on the craft's center of mass. And now that we had our EVE Ascent and Return module complete, it was time to move on to the Interplanetary stage. Since weight is going to be a big factor, our Interplanetary stage is going to be handled by our main swerve, and it will be fueled by an external fuel tank. But since the swerve is far too weak to actually finalize the orbital insertion burn out of Kerbin, we will be adding two Rhino engines to get us into orbit once we're done with the atmospheric stage of our flight. Speaking of which... Before starting the build, I assumed that this would be the easiest part, and I couldn't have been more wrong. Over the course of many hours, I've built three prototypes, but ended up settling on this design since it seemed to be the most promising. The general idea for our first stage is to add a massive wing that can provide adequate lift for a curb and ascent, along with jet engines to power it. Figuring out where I wanted to place all the parts was starting to get pretty difficult, since we were basically running out of space on the craft for attachment points. I also had to consider our center of mass and lift balance very carefully, since we will be performing atmospheric flight with nearly every single one of our 14 stages. Now, since our craft was getting extremely heavy, I unfortunately had to use 40 whiplash engines for the first stage. I say unfortunately, because KSP-2 does not like a large amount of engines, and our FPS suffered greatly because of it. In fact, each test flight took me a full hour. And I'm sure that, as anyone that has built an SSTO in KSP-2 will know, the only way to refine the build is to do lots of test flights. This meant that I had to basically spend hours looking at PowerPoint slideshows to get this thing operational. However, this was far from the only issue that I had to deal with. 
Unfortunately, when attempting to stage the wings, I'd get the drifting camera bug. Oddly enough, if I got the craft into orbit and then staged each separator individually, I wouldn't get the bug. But the same trick did not work in the atmosphere. Thankfully, after many hours of trying to figure out what was going on, I found out that the bug was being caused by wings being directly attached to separators. If I, instead, attached the fuel tank to the separator and then fixed the wing to the fuel tank, I would no longer get the bug. The next issue I ran into was aerodynamic instability once we staged the wings. This was caused by a massive hydrogen drop tank placed on top of the craft. Normally, this wouldn't be a huge challenge to fix, but in order to test my changes, I'd have to do an hour-long flight every single time. I also couldn't just angle the engines like on a shuttle, since once we leave the atmosphere, the craft would swing in the other direction due to an offset thrust and weight centers. The solution I ended up going with was adding additional fuel for Rhino engines on the wings, and staging the wings a little bit further into our flight. I've also added two vectors above our center of mass for added stability during the first part of our second stage flight. And with that, we were finally ready to take off. After literally 25 hours of building and testing, our space plane took off the runway for the last time and is finally on its way to ferry 20 kerbals to even back. Honestly, I almost gave up on the project several times. Slapping the EVA send stage onto a rocket and turning it into a shuttle would have been a lot easier, but I'm sure that you guys will agree that it wouldn't have been nearly as cool. As always, I will have the craft file in the description for you guys, but god help whoever is going to attempt to actually fly it. Anyway, typically with a hydrogen SSTO, what you want to do is to accelerate at around 10 kilometers of altitude and let the Earth's rotation pitch the craft up for you. However, due to our second stage's aerodynamic instabilities, our primary goal is to ascend out of the lower atmosphere as fast as possible. This means that, once we gather enough speed, we will be pitching up quite aggressively in preparation to stage our wings. Now, unfortunately, on my first attempt, a decoupler from the front of our craft took out one of our Rhino engines right after staging the wings. This meant that I had to load a quick save and wasn't able to get a single continuous shot for our ascent. Thankfully, on our second attempt, we did stage successfully and our craft did not spin out. You guys have no idea how happy I was to see the craft finally on its way to orbit. It seemed like all of that hard work was finally about to pay off. My FPS also increased drastically after staging our 40 whiplashes, so the orbital insertion stage went by really fast for me. After reaching orbit and waiting for a transfer window, we fired up our engines and got underway. During our burn, I had to keep an eye out on our fuel levels since KSP-2 won't display staging information correctly. After getting out into deep space, we performed a series of small mid-course correction burns and were on our way to EVE. Once there, we reduced our apoapsis in preparation for the aero break and ditched our external fuel tank. Since re-entry heating isn't in the game yet, we came in pretty hot and did a very aggressive first aero break before raising our periapsis and doing a series of smaller, more controlled aero breaks to slow our velocity down in preparation for the landing. Now, I feel like watching me do corrective burns or numerous aero breaks is a little boring, and considering that the video is pretty long already, I decided to make this part of the trip as short as possible. However, the landing was anything but boring. Now, in order to make this craft as efficient as possible, I had to put its center of mass very close to its center of lift. This made the craft naturally unbalanced. And unfortunately, we got into a depth spin in the upper atmosphere. This was a real problem, since based on my testing, this craft is unable to get out of a flat spin in the lower atmosphere. Thankfully, through wild WASD mashing, I did manage to recover the craft before we got too far down into the lower atmosphere. And now all that was left was the landing, which is made infinitely hotter by the new EVE clouds. Even though they do look amazing, they obscure your vision completely and don't let you see where you're landing. We also don't have any tools, like Curvenet from KSP-1 for example, of investigating the surface, which meant that I basically had to quicksave and do several mock landings in different directions in order to find a suitable landing spot. But after a lot of trial and error, I did manage to find a sufficiently tall and flat hill that we could glide to. This was very fortunate, since I really did not want to repeat our super sketchy re-entry. And with that, we were finally down on EVE's surface. 
Since our 20 Kerbals wanted to see the views, I let them all out to roam around for a while. Though they quickly realized that Eve is a lot more interesting looking from orbit, so we stuffed them back into their crew cabins and got underway. And now, here comes the part that you guys have probably all been waiting for, the Eve Ascent. Now, you might be wondering, why do you have the resource manager over my stages? Isn't that kinda dumb? Well, since KSP2 won't display staging information properly, I had to monitor my fuel levels manually and stage in accordance. The ascent itself worked something like this. Since our TVR was pretty low at the start of the flight, we'd start our ascent at a relatively shallow angle. In addition, since Eve's lower atmosphere is incredibly dense, we didn't want to go too fast or would lose tons of Delta V to drag. Once we got higher into the atmosphere and our weight decreased after staging, we'd gradually increase both our climb angle and speed until the last of our chemical stages ran out. Since the swerve was still not operating at its rated power output, we had to slightly decrease our rate of climb until we got a bit higher into the atmosphere. Now, some of you might have noticed that we got a staging bug. This meant that, among other things, KSP2 will no longer display our Delta V. To account for that, I'll once again throw up the resource manager so you guys can see that I didn't just use infinite fuel to get out of EU. Now, if that was the only issue, we'd be good. But sadly, this bug also prevented us from making maneuver nodes. I tried a lot of different ideas to fix it, but sadly, I don't think it's fixable. The only way I could come up with to continue our mission was to spawn the exact same craft back at Kerbin, match its fuel load with what we had once we got out of Eve's orbit, and unfortunately use cheats to teleport it there. I feel like this is... an acceptable solution, since both our fuel loads and orbits are nearly identical with both craft. After sort of resolving the issue, it was time to deal with the next bug on the list. Trajectory lines past celestial objects are almost always wrong, and Eve is no exception. Thankfully, the difference between our actual trajectory and what the game showed us wasn't that big, so after a bit of trial and error, I was able to eyeball a pretty good trajectory out of EVE. Once out into deep space, we performed several small mid-course correction burns to get a Kerbin intercept. And after getting back to Kerbin, we executed an aero break in preparation to land at the KSC. Or did we? Uh, Kerbin, what are you doing over there, you might ask? Well, I'm sorry to say it guys, but you got bamboozled. Our main destination has never been EVE, but rather, Minimus all along. Bob simply left something on EVE's surface, so we made a quick little detour on our way. You see guys, Minimus actually presents one of KSP's greatest challenges, since I'm pretty sure the only way to get to Minimus is to land on EVE first. No, but for real guys, Minimus does actually present a bit of an issue for us. Our craft doesn't have any form of RCS. And since reaction wheels are extremely weak in KSP2, we won't be able to pitch our craft up once we land on Minimus. The solution I came up with was landing inside of a crater and then basically driving up it to take off. Unfortunately, craters on Minimus are not very smooth, and my initial plan didn't really work. It was time for plan B. So, I landed just outside of the crater on a small hill. After that super graceful landing, I carefully turned our craft around to face it and used it to take back off. Since Minimus is extremely cursed when it comes to trajectory line bugs, and we still had a little bit of extra delta V, I've decided to leave Minimus here of influence before trying to lower our periapsis down to Kerbin. After leaving Minimus, we performed one of our last burns to lower our periapsis enough to start arrow breaking around Kerbin. Several arrow breaks later, we waited for the KSC to be on the light side of the planet and put ourselves on a suborbital trajectory for the last time. Thankfully, the craft was very stable on re-entry. It also had pretty low drag, so it was pretty easy to control our descent. Now, I'm not super happy about having to use cheats, but as far as I can tell, it was really the only way to salvage the mission. I mean, the new craft had the exact same amount of fuel, and it was actually placed in a slightly lower orbit, so we didn't actually gain anything out of it. Personally, I feel like it's kinda justified, but you guys can let me know what you think about it in the comments. Anyway, this was the story of how I got 20 Kerbals to Minimus and back, with a quick little detour to Eve's surface. If you enjoyed the video, which I really hope you did, consider checking out my channel since I got more videos just like this one. As always, I'm Karma Mom Brown, and I'll see you in the next one.